Hey, geometry class. Happy Sunday morning. Um, actually, it's probably Monday, Tuesday, possibly Wednesday. Could be even after spring break for some of you. But this lecture is uh, 8.3. We're going to be applying trig ratios and solving right triangles. Uh, what I do want you to do first, though, is pause this video and try these three, or I shouldn't say five problems, and then I'll go over them. Boom. Welcome back. All right, let's see uh, how you did. Number one. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm using the Pythagorean theorem. So if a is 8 and b is 5, a squared plus b squared is 89, and then I take the square root of that to solve for side c. Well, when I'm given the hypotenuse, of course, I still need to square side c. So for problem number 2, it's 61 squared equals 60 squared plus the unknown side squared. Um, so I need to subtract the the known side squared from the hypotenuse, then take the square root of that, and then of course I get 11. Uh, number three, you get uh, side A as 8. Of course this this drawing, you know, it keeps changing depending on the side lengths. And then in problem four, they just want you to use the distance formula. So again, the 10 comes from 0 uh, minus 10, or negative 10, or 10 minus 0. Let's do it this way. 10 minus 0 is 10. Square that, you get 100. 8 minus 3 is 5. Square that, you get 125 when you add them together. So take the square root of that. That's either 5 square roots of 5 in simplest radical form, or 11.18. The last one here, again, let's do uh, this point. 6 minus negative 2 is 8. 8 squared of 64. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Add them together, you get 65. Take the square root, and 8.06. Woo! All right, now that you got the warm-up done, the mission in this uh, lecture, this, this video, is we're going to be using trigonometric ratios to find angle measures Ooh. Um, in right triangles and then solving real-world problems. The second part, build a device that can measure that, we're going to do that in class um, probably on Wednesday and then in the lab um, or outside on Friday. So the first thing I want to point out is the following. Let me move my picture over to the side here. And what this says is the sine of A equals, well, you might have remembered this from the class we did, and I, I'm going to speak up so you can hear me. The sine of A is the cosine of B. B. Well, that's awesome. That's, that's fantastic. So if I was saying, hey, this is A and this is B, of course, then this is C, which is our right angle. Well, the sine of A, sine stands for so ka toa, so opposite over hypotenuse. So if I'm standing at A, it's going to be 3 over 5. Okay, great. Well, if I'm standing at B, B cosine would be adjacent. So that would also be 3 over 5 or 0.6. The reason this is important to know is angle A, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals, you guessed it, 90 degrees. Those are complementary angles. Okay? And that is really important to know. Now, the tangent of B, again, I'm standing at angle B, TOA, opposite over um, adjacent, 4 over 3, and I think that's 1.33 repeated. Okay? So what I'm trying to show you here is, and just to, to re remind you, that the sine of A is the cosine of B, the cosine of A is the sine of B, and that angles A and B are complementary angles. And sometimes we use the number one and two, so we can um, figure those out. Now, what does this have to do with the T in China? Well, here it is. Uh, I got a little problem for you. It says Baldwin Street in Dunedin, New Zealand. Anybody been there? I've been there. Mm, very interesting Scottish town in New Zealand. The steepest street in the world has a grade of 38%. Well, when you think of a grade, what that means is a slope. So when I say a slope of 38%, that means 
if I'm going here along this road, and I go up like that, that means I am gaining 38 feet for every 100 feet I travel, right? Rise over run is basically grade. That is slope. So what they want you to do then is say, well, figure out what the angle is of the street. And it's a great question because I'm like, hey, if I'm, if I'm going up the road or I'm going down the road, what's the measure of this angle here? Okay? What is the angle that it makes with the horizon? Hmm. Okay. Well, what's interesting here is I've got two of the side lengths. And I don't actually need the third side length to solve this problem. So if I'm standing right here, here's Mr. Rising, da, 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 right? And I say, hey, what's this angle? Well, from where I'm standing, I know the opposite side, right? And that's 38. And I know the adjacent side, and that's 100. And you're thinking to yourself, well, that's kind of like the tangent. So the tangent of where I'm standing should be 0.38. And you know what? It is. But what is so cool is if I use my trig table or I use my calculator and I do like the backwards, you know, instead of saying, hey, what's the uh, the you know the tangent of 42 degrees or whatnot. If I actually plug in the arc tangent of 38 over 100 or the arc tangent of 0.38, I will get that angle measure, and that's the whole point of this exercise here. So when I do second uh, tangent on my calculator, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me go this way. No, 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 no. See. Tangent negative 1, I'm going to put in 0.38. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm using my trig table backwards. Hit enter, what do you get? It says 20.806. And if I said round this to the nearest degree, you would say, Mr. Rising, that angle is 21 degrees. And Take a look at your, um, your trig table as well, that yellow sheet of paper. When you look at that and you say, hey, I know what that is. Wait a minute. Right? When I find my 0.38, my 0.3839 tangent, yeah, absolutely. That's a 21 degree angle. Awesome. So this is how we're going to use these trig ratios and we're going to use them backwards to find angle measure. Well, so what? Well, here it is in your book. So if you know the sine, the cosine, or the tangent, and remember, the sine, cosine, and tangent is just a ratio between the sides, okay? If you know those, then you can use the inverse trigonometric function to find angle measures. Well, that is what's so cool. So if um, you know what the sine of A is, then you use the arc sine to find the measure of angle A. And again, if you know what the cosine of A is, then you can use the arc uh, cosine to figure out what the angle is. And if you know the tangent of A, then use arc tangent to uh, figure out the measure of the angle. So let's go back to the warm up and just take a look at this problem here. And we said in the third example, we said, hey, um, A we figured out was 8, B we figured out was um, uh, 6 and 10. So let me write that. And, and it says find sine B. All right, so here we go. 8, 6, and 10. And I guess I didn't actually do this in the warm up, but if I want the sine of B, sine again of B is um, opposite 6 over hypotenuse, right? And that's 0. 0.6. Well, now. If I want to find the measure of angle B, all I need to do is do the arc sine of 0.6. So now I go to my calculator, second sine, 0.6, close the parentheses, da 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 da. Can you guys see that okay? I'm getting some reflection. Equals boom. 36.869.
Let's round that to the nearest degree, and that's a 37 degree angle. It's really important, again, as I reminded you in class the other day, that when we uh, round these uh, sides, we go to three decimal places, but when we get to angles and whatnot, um, we can cut, that, cut them off. So what does this mean to solve a triangle? Well, simply put, we need to find all the side lengths and all the angle measures. So from this day forward, if you hear solve the triangle, it means I want to know every side length and I want to know every angle measure. So take a look at this problem here. All right, it says uh, R negative 3, 1, 2, 3, up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My board is off. Look out, Loretta. All right, 3, 5 is over here now. I'll try to adjust. S is 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm just going to go like that. Eh, we're getting there. And T is 4, negative 2. Ha! I've got a right triangle. I love it. All right, T. So that's 4, negative 2, 4, 5, and R is negative 3, 5. Okay, well, what this means then is I need to, well, let's not use that. I need to put the side lengths in here. Hey, now forgive me here. My board's off, but you'll get the idea here in just a second. All right. Now, you know what? I'm going to pause, and that's way better. Find the side lengths to the nearest hundredth, and the angle measures to the nearest degree. Okay, angle S, 90 degrees. All right, now, my other side lengths, when I have vertical and horizontal lines, we love those because I can just subtract the two. So if I'm going from negative 3 to positive 4, that's 7 units. And if I'm going from 5 to negative 2, that's also 7 units. So, whoa, whoa, whoa! I've got an isosceles triangle. Psh, easy! I'm, and it's a right triangle. I know these are both 45 degrees, right? So my other angles are 45 and this problem is not the kind of problem I was looking for, but that's okay. Uh, I know that this side here is uh, RT is equal to 7 times the square root of 2. I can do that on my calculator real quick. And I've got 7 times the square root of 2. Do you like if I'm showing you the calculator? Does that help? And it says 9.899. It says round to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to take that and round it up. It's going to be 9.90. So let's change this problem, or not change the problem, but change the method for a moment on how we would use uh, inverse trig ratios to figure out these angle measures and whatnot. If I said angle R, I know uh, the opposite and the adjacent side of R. So if I said tangent of R equals opposite over adjacent, and that's 7 over 7, right? Well, that means the arc tangent of 7 over 7, which is 1, and I can do it on my calculator, I can do it on my trig table, would have to equal 45 degrees, right? And so then, if I, again, going back to the original problem, if this is 90 and this is 45, that means these two have to add up their complementary angles. So 90 minus 45, that one's also 45. What I want you to do is see this process, and then we're going to practice the heck out of it in class um, on how to solve all kinds of triangles, not just special right triangles or isosceles right triangles, but every kind of triangle imaginable. All right, hope this uh, lecture helped, and uh, we'll hit it hard in class.